Hey guys, how you doing? Wanted to take a little time and put together a slightly different kind of video today. Um, a little history about me. Before I went into business for myself with my first business back in 2002, um, I worked in the equipment rental business. I um, basically... We did sales and marketing towards the end. I was operations, but I was involved in lots of different aspects. And part of what we did was market analysis. And so we did, you know, analyticals. We did extrapolations. You know, we analyzed market segments and created... I guess you, what you could call almost like a barometer for the industry. And so when we could make direct correlations between a specific segment and a specific type of equipment utilization within the company, or even not equipment utilization, but sometimes um, percentage of revenue. In other words, if if this figure hits this mark, typically our discount structure drops to 10% on average instead of 30%. And so part of what we did there was we dissected the industry and then looked at how it's going to affect our future and upcoming work. When I first started hauling for Amazon, um, it was primarily based on or headed up by the idea that, you know, our oil field work died. And so, you know, just as recent as, you know, 2019, we were operating 20 trucks in the oil field and, and generating, you know, 15,000 plus per week revenue per truck, plus other services we provided with hot shots and, and other other services that were unrelated to trucking. Um, we, we offered basically, if they were willing to pay, we were willing to do it. Anyway, and so when I first started hauling for Amazon, the, the first key element I discovered was, you know, their prices change. You know, it's kind of like an algorithm that's built into it. And I'm sure by now several of you know, if you've watched any of my videos and you didn't know before, I'm sure you know now. The stuff that's going to move, you know, tonight or first thing in the morning over the next few hours, the rate's going to go up. But the other thing that I discovered was you can, as a barometer to what's going to happen, you can see one segment and it has a direct relationship to the other. So to better explain or kind of justify or verify what I'm stating, um, those that haul their own 53-foot trailer to Amazon, for the most part, we are transporting from an Amazon vendor to an Amazon fulfillment center. And... Amazon refers to this as inbound freight. And so that's, that's um, items that or commodities that are not in their system now. So it's coming from a vendor into the Amazon system. Most, not all, I, I know some of you are going to say, oh, no, you're wrong, you're wrong. Um, most of your power-only loads where you're transporting you know, a preloaded trailer or an empty trailer, most of those are going from one Amazon fulfillment center to another. And then those of you that are doing box trucks, the majority of them are going from a fulfillment center, typically a smaller one. I know in some cases they are the, the large ones. By large ones, I mean, you know, 750,000 square foot up to a million square foot facility with 200 doors, that's, that's a larger facility. And so a lot of those facilities in that size 
actually don't have um, your box truck operation, they they tend to leave that to your smaller ones. And so this is kind of how it works. So Amazon buys from vendors, and let's let's just use you know Igloo as as the example. So I know at Igloo because I've seen them there. There are some occasional trailers that are there, but typically when it's an Amazon trailer that's at a vendor, it's in a really short haul, and they try to do those hauls with Amazon trucks, the little day cabs that everybody sees. You know, I've seen some KWs and I've seen some Volvos, and for those of you that think Amazon's not growing that part of the business, um, we travel all over the country. I've done Amazon all over the country. Right now, I'm not doing Amazon, but even so, I've passed, you know, Volvo Mac dealers, and you'll see 20, 30, even 40 power units sitting there. I know about the middle of last year, at a dealership in Phoenix, there must have been 100 day cabs, all Amazon blue with the Amazon logos on it, and apparently these were brand new trucks going out to them. Anyway, so the way their system works is most of your inbound freight is hauled by people like me that have their own 53-foot trailer, and we go do a live load at the vendor, we haul the freight to bigger fulfillment centers, and we deliver a live unload most of that freight that doesn't stay at that particular fulfillment center is then loaded onto Amazon trailers that power only guys then move to other locations. Um, in some cases, the fulfillment center is the same size, but one fulfillment center is better equipped to be a distribution than the other. In some cases, they're moved to slightly smaller fulfillment centers, and it's at these smaller centers where you're going to see what they call the last mile contractor. And so your last mile service ends up being, in some cases, the blue vans with, you know, the stripe on it. Those are all independent small companies with like 10 vans. And then the other thing you see there is individuals that are paid a fixed price per hour and, you know, it includes they use their own car. So that's kind of how Amazon structures or their infrastructure is set up to handle freight from inbound to delivery. Anyway, so for those of you guys that do power only or even the van, a barometer that you want to use Go to any market and select, oh, where is it? Under trailer status, select required, okay? So what this is going to do, the Ontario market, you know, Southern California is, is a busy market. Um, there are a ton of facilities in the Southern California market and here's the easiest way to do this Interesting that it doesn't want to show them all. This works. Well, maybe it's because I'm not in that area right now. But here you can see, maybe it's still loading. Oh, there we go. So aside from the hubs, you know, and you guys all know what the little lockers are, I assume. 
But aside from the hub, this shows you, you know, Ontario 3, Ontario 8. It shows you all their different warehouses that are basically distribution centers. Anyway, so with all that being said, if you look at trailer required and you take a look at 23 results, now you can tell by looking at these individual jobs, you can tell which ones are vendors and which ones are um, Amazon locations. So your vendors are going to be a series of numbers, like the very top one is a 0 17 Five four nine four six four one, right? And so that's that's a vendor. Your Amazon locations are typically going to have the airport code that that when they built the facility was intended to service it, and then which facility it is numerically. And so SCK, I'm going to assume is an airport um, that's probably in Sacramento area. And so SCK-3 is probably the third fulfillment center they built to be serviced by that airport. If you go down one, you know, LGB-4, that's probably the fourth facility to be serviced by airport LGB. So on and so on, right? And so if we look at these loads, you know, we can see how much freight Amazon in the L.A. market has to what they call inbound and this has a direct correlation on what the rest of the market or the rest of the Amazon infrastructure is going to do or need based on how many of these loads there are and so basically when these start to dry up you're going to see you know systematically you know and that's that's the last one you're going to see systematically that the other loads that go with it are also going to taper down. So let's switch now from required to provided. Oops. And now you will notice that these are going to have Amazon code as the point of origin and then an Amazon code as your delivery. So like the top one's LAX5. And then, you know, that one's going to LAS too. So LAX is obviously in the LA area. Buena Park's kind of far, but I guess early in their structure, you know, Buena Park was still considered LAX. So that's going to Vegas. Anyway, and so as you look at these, um, there's 70 loads in Southern California. Um, that's usually a much higher number. There's usually a lot more loads than that. And so, just from looking at those two figures, I can tell you Southern California for Amazon is not going to be great, and that's just how the market's fluctuating. On top of that, if you look at a lot of these, you know the rates are the rates are still pretty low. Um, let's see some of the these are these are set by date, and so the Buena Park to Las Vegas load is set to load at 10 o'clock tonight. And they still have it at $1.91 a mile. I looked at these a little earlier, and it was lower. It was, it was like $1.50 something. So it went up. How much more it'll go up, I don't know. Um, but I think that's a pretty good barometer of it's going to slow down a little bit in the L.A. market, which I'm going to say by association, you're going to see that across the board. And so let's turn off the provided. And now we'll look at the dry, uh, the not the dry van, the um, 26 foot truck. Now it shows zero. I don't have a whole lot of experience with those. I don't do them. I don't use them. It's very possible those don't load until later tonight, maybe even at midnight. And so it could be they don't have any because they haven't loaded them yet. Or it could be they don't have any because everyone saw it looked thin and people just grabbed up loads so they would have something. Um, that's, that's my take on it. That's kind of how I learned to read and understand how Amazon functions. 
And, you know, just for the sake of, I don't want to call it an argument, but for the sake of curiosity, you know, Dallas is a busy market for for uh, Amazon. I before would have spent a week easy running between Dallas and Memphis and have loads every day. So, you know, they have no 26-footers. It's still very possible some are going to load later tonight. I'm not saying it's not. Anyway, so the 26-footers are typically used. I don't, I don't think I got to that part of the, of the infrastructure. So you have your last mile contractors. The 26-footers typically deliver to outlying areas where Amazon does not have a last mile contractor facility, and they use the postal service for that. So overnight, they deliver, you know, packages that are to be delivered by that specific zip code, and they deliver it directly to the post office in time for it to be sorted, put on, on the, the, the U.S. Postal Service van, and then it gets taken out to your home or your home, you know, your, your friend's home or your place of business or whatever. So here we're looking at, um, oh, hell, that's, that's all trailers. So there's eight in Dallas. And so we don't really need, even need to split these up. There's a total of eight loads on the board for Dallas. And so if I were, if I were only interested in doing Amazon, and I think Amazon's banking on this, those of you guys that haven't, you know, spread, it, spread your eggs out and put them in more than one basket, and you're only working with Amazon... What Amazon is doing is they are doing contracts, short-term contracts, and they are doing them really cheap. So they are counting on you guys to take these contracts, which, you know, this particular one is a team load. 119 hour block, one truck, two drivers, and it pays 8,600 bucks, and they're probably going to run you a thousand miles a day for six days. And so they're kind of banking on people taking these these short term contracts. You know, here's here's an example. LAS, we had that that discussion earlier. So LAS is Las Vegas. So this is Las Vegas, a solar one, 13-hour blocks, which pretty much means you go to work for a full shift. Um, there's five blocks in the week, and they're going to pay you $5.89 a day. So in a week, you're going to make $29.45. Um, I'm sitting outside of a receiver right now. I picked up a load Friday night, and I hauled it. 1,400 miles, and I'm getting $3,000, guys. I'm going to have the whole rest of the week to make more money. These contracts don't make sense. They're, they're, they're not fruitful. If for some reason you're stuck and you're dedicated only to Amazon, you need to start looking for a way out of that. I'm in, I'm in Paris, Arkansas at the moment. Um... So let's look at Memphis. Memphis is a really good freight area, but again, with no filters, there's a total of 21 loads. Um, you know, trailer required, trailer required, and the rates at least aren't too bad. Uh, the rates have always been better under trailer required. Um, that's just kind of the way Amazon's worked. Now, a little later on, I'm not sure if something's going to come up and they're going to dump 30, 40, 50 loads on these particular boards. But um, I'm just pointing out what I see as a little bit on the obvious side. Like here's a load going back towards Dallas. I used to take these all day long, um, but not at a buck 85. If you wait on that one, um, the biggest problem is its load time isn't till 1230 tomorrow, so a bunch of people are going to be awake when that one hits its critical point. 
if this load were to load at like seven in the morning, you know, three or four in the morning, this load would probably hit fifteen to sixteen hundred dollars. Um, for under five hundred miles, that's that's in the three dollar a mile range. You know, that's that's a doable rate. Of course, FTW one is a disaster. You're going to be there all night, yada yada yada. But you'll make your fifteen hundred bucks for the day. Anyway, guys, I'm not trying to be the the party pooper or the one to stress everyone out, but when I first started hauling for Amazon, I studied them, I figured them out. Um, I know they're ever changing, ever evolving, and so on, but I made it a point to extrapolate data. I, I created multiple spreadsheets where we were we were physically cutting and pasting stuff off of these particular boards so we could learn what the patterns were and, and how things work. Um, I've got a 26 year old nephew that works for me. He's pretty sharp. And, you know, I had him put some of this stuff together and then with filters, we would, we would dissect this thing. And, um, you know, when the third or the fourth quarter hit and they were offering the contracts and they were as cheap as they were, we immediately noticed a lot of loads disappeared from spot market and you know we made a shift we made a shift um i'm using a dispatch service you can see it in one of my other videos i'm not going to say anything here because then they won't let me post this particular uh video on the load board because then it would be advertising or considered spam and i'm trying to make these videos helpful to you guys anyway um for those of you that have access to the load board, start trying to figure out how to analyze and compare. You know, if you're doing power only, keep an eye on, you know, the, the trailer required loads, and you'll start to notice a, a direct correlation. It slows you slow. And then the, the vans, you know, the same thing happens. If there's less inbound freight, you know, there, there isn't as much being consumed Amazon system is almost miraculous in how it works. You know, the minute someone clicks, you know, buy it with one click or whatever, their system starts to place an order to bring more freight in so that it doesn't get caught behind a curve. And so it's a pretty immediate reaction when you don't see inbound freight at a facility. There's also no very quickly there isn't going to be any freight going from you know fulfillment center to fulfillment center and so keep an eye on that for yourselves so you don't get caught you know from from one day to the next or from one week to the next all of a sudden you're you're sitting and you got no work um don't don't paint yourself in a corner and don't believe that well it's that time of year there's no work um i'm still getting three bucks a mile sometimes in the fours on the open market. It, it's not a matter of, you know, stick with Amazon because they have work every day. What's happening is as these loads start to deteriorate and degrade, people are going to start booking their loads earlier so they have them. Amazon knows this, and that's why they've been lowering the rates because if you today book a load for next Wednesday – you're going to book it at $1.25 a mile, $1.40 a mile, and there's no money in that. You're, you're, you know, you're paying yourself in a corner in another direction. But anyway, just wanted to share something I noticed. Um, I actually noticed it last night. Um, I set the phone down because I had to get to sleep. I, I drove through most of the night to make my, to make my uh, delivery for for where I'm at now. I wanted some free time today. But anyways, I wanted to take a little time, put together this video, not trying to depress anyone, but just be aware that's that's what I see happening at Amazon. There's there's other options out there. You guys should start stirring the pot and see where else you can move your equipment. Um, I'm not saying there isn't going to be any work, but it's going to get really cheap really quick. Anyway, thanks for watching.